All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. And in this video, Gervonta Tank Davis gets great... <laughs> gets, uh, how can I say, he uh, is going to get a lot of credit for what took place last night. So many people talking bad about Gervonta Davis's resume, but his resume is shining a lot more bright this morning with the fight that took place between Mario Barrios and your Danies Ugas. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. And in this video, we're going to be in the 147-pound and the 135-pound division at the same time. In this instant, I am talking about uh, the fight that took place last night uh, on the undercard of the Jermel Charlo versus uh, Canelo Alvarez undercard or Canelo Alvarez versus Jermel Charlo. Always forget which one I'm supposed to put first. You had a great fight that took place. Two great fights, really. Arison Lubin fought Jesus Ramos in a fight that a lot of people are not happy about, but I'm telling you, I was lit. I was looking at them cards, listening to them. People call that fight laughing the entire time thinking to myself, this is going to be another instance where this fight does not get, does not go the way that Steve Farhood and Showtime thinks it's going. Because uh, Jesus Ramos is losing a lot of rounds, man. He's losing a lot of rounds. Anyway, the other one, though, where nobody's going to argue about what took place was the annihilation of my Cuban brother, your Danies Ugas. By my Houston, by my Texas brother, I do live in Texas, so I'm claiming him out of San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Mario Barrios beats up in a one-sided fight, really, against one of the better welter, one of the better welterweights there are. Your Danny Zugas, and makes Gervonta Davis's resume look really, really good, doesn't it now? Where people say that that uh, Gervonta Davis has never fought anybody, he's never done anything, the people that he fights are all easy fights. Well, he just had another milestone that uh, I, I want to say the word could be posthumous, right? After the fight, right? A posthumous is after death, but after the fight is over, Right what Mario Barrios did. And let me, before I get into the details of it, because I will, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much for your continued support. It really does mean a huge deal to the channel. And thank you to everybody that supports in the super, uh, in the super, uh, thanks to videos like this, like Barbara D, like Matty O. Matty, you the best, man. Never see you on the live streams. Always see you out there in the uh, in the comments section, man, which is super super thanks. Thank you, brother. But let's get into this, okay? Um, Mario Barrios with a jab, a jab and combination punching beats your Danny's Ugas uh in a very in a lopsided fight, drops your Danny's Ugas. I do believe he dropped your Danny Ugas two times, busts his eye, uh, his the eye his eye up, which is I hope, by the way, I really hope your Danny's Ugas gets better. Um and that that's he didn't re-break that orbital bone, but that damage that um that Errol Spence Jr. did to his eye came back up again in that or apparently came back up again in the fight with Mario Barrios, but Mario Barrios beat some lopsided fight. And now Mario Barrios is in position to get a rematch with Keith Thurman for the WBC belt. If uh, Terrence Crawford vacates it uh, or to become the mandatory for, uh, for Terrence Crawford. Now, why is this important to Gervonta Davis? Because Gervonta Davis gets a lot of criticism about the competition that he's fought and how he never fights anybody. They're all a bunch of easy fights. I will take Mario Barrios over Devin Haney after watching that fight. 
I will take Mario Barrios. I will take Mario Barrios over um, a lot of people after watching that fight with your Danny Zoo guys. Mar- when Jermel- remember, Gervonta Davis fought. This is the second person that this has happened to. Gervonta Davis fought Mario Barrios for his WBA a World Championship title, and he beat him by stoppage. Mario Barrios then moves up to 147 pounds, puts a very good showing in against uh, Keith one-time Thurman, stops, winds up knocking out, I think he might have knocked out one or two dudes since then, and then comes back with another win against your Danies Ugas to win an interim title in the welterweight division. Germonte Davis has now beaten two guys that have had that type of success happen to them after Gervonta Davis stopped him. The first is Jose Pedraza, when who Gervonta Davis fought as an underdog to beat for his IBF world for his IBF world title, a uh, 130-pound title. And after Gervonta Davis annihilated Jose Pedraza, Jose Pedraza moves up to 135 pounds and subsequently becomes the 130 pound WB, I think he won the WBO championship uh, at the weight class above. So not only was he a world class, a world champion when Gervonta beats him, he moves up in weight and Gervonta Davis becomes, uh, becomes a champion again after uh, and becomes a champion after he moves up uh, to 135, uh, up to 135 pounds. Now you have Mario Barrios that is basically lined up to do the same thing. He and this is this is a guy that looked extremely good with your Dan- with your Danny Zoo guys. And I'm telling you, this guy will give Stanley Onis a fight. He'll give Virgil Ortiz a fight. Virgil Ortiz, I know, is at 154 pounds now, but he'll give all these guys good fights, man. And so the fact that Gervonta Davis walked him down, broke him down, and stopped him is t- is, a- is a huge testimony to the ability of Gervonta Davis. And I think people at this point in time should really stop that line that they throw at Gervonta, saying Gervonta is not the guy, he's not the one wanting to fight people. If you look at, like, matter of fact, like Mar- Mario Barrios and Regis Progre, I think that that is a what and what fight between Mario Barrios and and Regis Progre. I think he'd have. I think Regis Progre would have a very difficult time with Mario Barrios. He may win. Same thing I would say for Mario Barrios and Josh Taylor. I think Tiafimo Lopez and Mario would have a very hard time with Mario Barrios. Mario Barrios is a very very good fighter, but I just wonder when. People are going to start uh, giving credit to uh, to Gervonta Davis for the level of competition that he's already fought. And this win makes him look all the better. Man, I am really happy for Mario. I'm really happy for Mario Barrios. Not particularly, you know, a feel for your Danny's Ugas. But at the same time, man, you know, it is what it is. It What happens in boxing, you know, it's a fight. And sometimes, you know, stuff like that happens. But look, man. Gervonta Davis, as far as my pound for pound list, is just shot up it, shot right up the list. I would tell you that I would have a certain, I would have Canelo Alvarez. Man, Canelo Alvarez may be back on my pound for pound list if it wasn't for the fact that he had popped dirty at a point in time, and I don't put, I just can't do it because there's always going to be some um, some amount of um some amount of question about what was going on there. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces.